You are listening to the Running Channel podcast with me, Andy Badley, my lovely co-host, Sarah Hartley, and the guy over there who, until a few minutes ago, had all of the audio channels muted, even though that's only John. <laughs> Rick. You know what? It is true. No, this is going to be a very quiet podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You've got it now. It's fine. That yeah. bit wasn't recorded. It's because really okay. I haven't actually seen you guys for a while. And, you know, now we're all back in the room together. It's lovely. I know. It's so lovely to be back. Andy's been off gallivanting. Where have, have you been? I've just come back from Portugal. I was at a press trip with Under Armour for the launch of their brand new carbon shoe. They're pretty late to the game, but they've got a shoe that's ultimately it's won the New York Marathon, so they're not messing about. And you've done some great runs over the last couple of days. And thank you to our loyal podcast listeners for <laughs> absolutely slating Andy <laughs> in his Strava comments. I think they're more slating you, actually. No, 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 no. no right, okay, they're on so my side. Definitely, <laughs> definitely you. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. I, uh, I decided to title one of them in, in, in light of our recent discussions on the podcast. I call one of them that Sarah, Sarah won't allow me to title my Strava activities anything pretentious yeah. as one of the, the titles. That's fair. And then a lot of comments in there giving you a few a few digs. And then actually, so the next day I actually did run quite a fast run. I was going hard and then I called it run without Sarah because obviously you weren't slowing me down. That was the, the joke. Yeah, I'm, maybe I'm I'll go back in and title my marathon run without Andy because you wouldn't oh. be able to keep up for that long. That's, tr- that's yeah. a too good far, idea. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's just weird to have him on social media full stop. I got a follow from Andy did on you? Instagram and I was like, <laughs> Andy Badley. You know what? Who's I keep, that? I is that keep... is that the Andy Badley? <laughs> Now, no, it's someone masquerading as me. I know you don't post on there, but I keep, because I've got your phone contact or something, I keep yeah. getting recommended you on TikTok and every time <laughs> it pops up, I just laugh to myself. Hey, I, I feel like this this abuse, uh, my lack of social media savvy is completely unfounded. <laughs> yeah, no, you're great, mate. Great. Um, shall we talk about what we're going to be talking about this week? Because we've got another excellent controversial topic for you. That's right. Yeah, uh, we're going to go through one topic every week uh, and then we will tackle a few quick news events and then your questions probably the most important part of the podcast we've but got today some, what have we got for people Sarah well we've got some very good questions coming up I selected them earlier but today's topic is are you a runner or a jogger <laughs> okay controversial let's get stuck in I want to start off with Rick are you a runner or a jogger I'm a runner because I just think jogger sounds a little bit half-hearted <laughs> Andy are you a runner or a jogger well I never really made a distinction like I I had a t-shirt. I was just an Olympian, so... Oh, I brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was the opposite. I was thinking that I, I, I know people get upset about being referred to as a jogger, but I didn't mind it. We had the distinction on, on the team because we're <laughs> running at the Olympics or somewhere like that. There, there were guys running staggeringly fast times over 100, 200, 400, and they would, uh, in a friendly way, refer to the, the distance runners as joggers. Um, so even though we were running pretty fast, I, I felt we'd be on the track at the same time as guys running sub 10 seconds for 100. And they'd be like, oh, the joggers are out again. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I, quite, I quite enjoyed that. I didn't mind. I love how the joggers are doing like two hour marathons. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's the fine. joggers are out again. Yeah. You know, they, <laughs> could be, they could be bothered to, you know, smash a few paces together. Yeah, so the joggers were going round and round, just like in the song, Park Run, Blur reference, uh, way before Sarah was born, probably. Yeah, I think um, that. And then, the, but the, the, then we would be making fun of the, the sprint, guys because they'd have such long recoveries and they would basically just sp- spend all of their time just wandering about it's watching like, the joggers like when you see people at the gym and they're just sat between sets i find that yeah. really hard as a oh, runner yeah. i just still don't get the sitting part of the gym on when the phone are... on the phone doing nothing <laughs> yeah. in between sets and oh, you I really want to use that bit of machinery <laughs> and, and they're just flicking through videos tick but then that's what you have to do. You have to take the recovery when you're like doing stuff. But I just hate it. I'm share, like, share. As, as you can see Be from kind. my, uh, as you can see from my physique, I consider myself a power athlete. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely didn't at all. But if you are a power athlete and you're in the gym or, or on the track, then you do need these really long recoveries. But it's disconcerting when I'd be knocking out K reps and then. Uh, 30 seconds, 60 seconds recovery or something, and then do another one. And they still haven't done another 60 meter effort from their one that they did 25 minutes ago. Like it's just different energy systems, I guess. Yeah. Do you want to know whether I'm a runner or a jogger? Oh, I forgot to ask no about you. No one's asked. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Sarah. Sarah, are you, I was just wondering actually, are you a runner or a jogger? Thank you so much, Rick. So I would, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, someone scroll through my Strava. I don't think I've ever called myself a jogger because I experience the same thing that you've experienced Andy but on the average runner side of it in that I want to be a runner I, I'm yeah. really serious about wanting to be a runner if someone says how was your jog I'm like offended 
But I feel like that's society telling me I should be offended as opposed to thinking of it in any way. Yeah, I think there is a... So the reason that we started talking about this was uh, we mentioned it last time on the podcast that there was a an article and it had surveyed a certain number of people and whether or not they thought pace played into the fact of, of you being able to call yourself a jogger. Uh, that's Freud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whether, whether or not pace played into, into the fact that you could call yourself a runner. And to be very clear at the running channel, if you're out there running in any capacity, you might be walking little bits, running, just doing any amount of running, then you are a runner. Um, uh, and I understand why people might get upset about being referred to as joggers, but that's not my take on it, I guess. No, I mean, ultimately the words are interchangeable in my mind. They're both, they're both adjectives to describe something that you're doing. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, adjectives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, adjectives. Oh, we're doing grammar now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should have stayed away from English. Um, but I looked into this because I knew this was the Oh, top. no, they're not adjectives at all. Sorry, you, you caught me unawares there. They're nouns, right? You are a jogger or a runner. Yeah, but you can be jogging or running. Oh, they would be verbs. What's an adjective? An, an adjective, adjective is a doing word. Describing word. word. Descri- no, no, verbs. Oh, no, yeah. Word. Oh, oh, yeah, words. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> This is this is embarrassing, and I've no idea when it's going to make the final cut. I kind of hope that it does. An uh, adjective describes something. Oh yeah, so detail. so yeah, so if you're a fast runner, yes, then the adjective is the fast bit. Yes, verb right. is what I meant. Slash verb, right? Noun. Yes. Are you running or jogging? Verb. Are yes. you a runner or a jogger? <laughs> Excellent. Noun. I'm glad that we've settled that. So uh, there's <sighs> hey, going to be a lot know of. What? Uh, I'm sure there's going to be loads of people listening. Gonna, being like gonna, the, things you're too scared to ask. Yeah. But don't know. <laughs> That's true. They're going to use this in schools. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I think actually there'll be just as many people who are grammar pedants um, <laughs> and who and, and who are freaking out. At, uh, I'm going to put it on you guys. I, I knew exactly what was going That's on. That's all right. Andy's keeping us in the straight and narrow. But so I looked up if there was a scientific difference between running and jogging. Like a definition. A definition, yeah. Mm. yeah. And there's a lot of stuff on the internet about how you put yourself in either one of the two categories which I found quite interesting. So there were, I took all the different bits and pace comes into it, yeah. which I was kind of expecting, but I guess that's subjective because I don't know the percentage of like your interval pace. Whereas if you're doing an easy run, then you, you could yeah. be doing both throughout a week basically is what they were saying. Yeah. Well, I would sometimes have referred to my easy runs as I'm going for a jog. Yeah. Um, which I think is fair. Or yeah. a warm up jog as well. I would say like, oh, I'm just going to do a warm up jog. Yeah, and that's yeah. fair enough. It feels like jogging is moving more slowly than rubbing, running. Yeah, yeah. I, so think yeah. I, problem, said, I almost said rubbing then. Rubbing, yes. <laughs> yeah. Careful. Jogging compared to rubbing. Uh, I think the distinction comes if it's used in a kind of derogatory way, where yeah. if you're sort of almost yeah. talking down to someone that they're, oh, you're only jogging. Like that's awful. If that, if yeah, yeah, yeah. that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I think actually, if everyone started looking at easy runs as jogging, yeah. then that might actually help people to unlock the thing that I always get frustrated with myself in in that I so post marathon all of my mileage is easy yeah am I still running too fast yes (laughs) (laughs) because have I got back into a form like routine yet no yeah I remember having a t-shirt that just said jogging across the front I thought it was the coolest thing ever I mean that's more of a savage indictment into my own fashion sense but but that's that's I I I identified (laughs) with that hey it was a long time ago right (laughs) last week (laughs) This week he's upgraded and now it says running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I treated myself. He's picked what, his what, pace up. What else was on the list? So pace was one of them. Form, which I wasn't expecting, was okay. another one. So yeah. they gave a definition of if you're running, then you're going to have your knees up. You're going to be flicking your feet up a little bit more. Whereas when you're jogging, your knees are going to be slightly more kind of flattened out. You're not going to be picking your feet up as much. Oh. And one site said that apparently when you're jogging, you're always going to have one foot on the floor at any one time. Whereas when you're running, both feet are going to lift off the floor. I mean, that's all nonsense, isn't it? So <laughs> whoever, know, whoever, whoever, whoever just... wrote this absolute... <laughs> Sorry, no, we're going to have to bleep that out. Um, whoever wrote this is... Yeah, I, I just disagree. But I just, I find that mad that there's like such a distinction of, because also what's interesting is yeah. that that definition is the definition between speed walking and running. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. That The one foot on the ground at any one point, that's literally the rules in Olympic race walking that you have to have one foot making contact right. with the ground at, um, at all times. So yeah. by definition, that's not then jogging. No. And also 
the the low low knee carriage and and heel flick and stuff yeah, I have te- neither I have neither of those things so I'm jogging all the time yeah so technically I mean you said at the start that you kind of identify as a jogger and well, according yeah. to this you are yeah. yeah um the other two were intensity and then perceived exertion so this was interesting I read a couple of articles where it was like if you're gonna go out for a jog then you it's more of a kind of leisure activity for you yeah and you're and you've got more time to enjoy it whereas they were saying that runners or people when they're running can't enjoy it because they're like going for improvement or pace or speed or stuff like that yeah, well that's how i would have made the distinction for myself like i said warm-up jog or an easy jog in the evening i would have casually i wouldn't have thought about what i was saying but i definitely have said that before yeah so just it's how, how you think about it i think there's might be loads of people out there i'd love to know podcast at the morning channel.com let, let us know whether you anyone's been kind of worried about defining themselves as a runner because you don't think you mm. run fast enough and don't merit mm. it i mean that's that shouldn't be the case because everyone's a runner um but yeah i think it comes into kind of whether you're getting everything into kind of one umbrella term yeah. like like we said a few weeks ago you need to be running at lots of different paces so if it's helpful to describe your easy runs as jogging then i think that's actually quite useful i'm definitely going to use that as a tool to make sure that my runs aren't too fast but like you say i think where it comes into issue is when people like you're a jogger and they yes. mean it in an insulting which way. Which in hindsight is exactly how I was being treated by those, by, by all the yeah. big boys in the playground who run faster than me. <laughs> 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 when, I was, when, I was, when I was on a track, um, feeling feeling inferior and, and, and slow. Yeah, but you could run for much longer than they could. Yes, that's what I told myself at the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although in fairness, if I could have been a 100 meter sprinter, I'd have much rather been able to do that. Really? Yeah. Well, it's more money, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's one. But I hadn't. I didn't mean that. But it's more. So in my mind, <laughs> everyone thinks that their distance or, or discipline is is the hardest. So I've spoken to field eventers. Um, obviously, I'd think pole vault is pretty hard to be fair. Mm. Um, but they would be like, oh, you know, I would hear people say, well, distance running is easy because you, you you just got to keep up. And and and. But I, in my mind, I'd be thinking, well, the 100, 200, 400, that's easy. You get your own lane. No one's pushing you. There's no tactics. You just run as fast as you can. Uh, but they would very much be like no no there's phases of my race so i have to execute those tactics so everyone thinks that they're we've, we've definitely digressed from jogging here but i just think it's fascinating that everyone perceives that their event is is the hardest so i'm sure that anyone's running 5k 10k half marathon etc they, they would think that the thing that they think is is their speciality is probably what they think is is the hardest to execute interesting i don't i've never really thought about what would be the hardest i think kind of clay pigeon shooting or uh <laughs> some some kind of equine event well, you're definitely dressed to go to either of those events today. Don't Rick, listen. You're in a full place. This, this, <laughs> this, this is a first warning. This is a first warning. If anybody criticises the, the, the V-neck, the V-neck. Then, then you're off. I'll meet you. I'll meet you. I've got the power. I'm no wearing criticism a here. Uh, roll neck in opposition to the yeah. V-neck. Yeah. Gone uh, to the other extreme. In and true Andy. Simon Cowell style, I have basically the same outfit every day, so I don't have to make any decisions that are, are difficult you, in the morning. Are you I've one of these people? I've got like five white t-shirts. Yeah. Five? Five? There are seven oh, days in a week, the weekend. Andy. Yeah. That's yeah. Oh. Don't get dressed the weekend. Yeah. Just pajamas just all day. Just running after kids all oh, week. Yeah, just the cr- well, ha- have a have a have a uniform for the crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it if you had a crash. It'd be so good. my house, obviously. That was one of the way you think about the, it. That's when I'm driving the bus, follow kids, and then yeah, looking, yeah, them yeah. After the, looking after them in the crash. That was he doesn't have a house number. He just has a name. <laughs> the crash. <laughs> Hot toddlers. Crash road. Yeah, that was um the the one of the biggest questions we got from one of the pods uh, the week before last was uh, how many kids has Andy actually got? Let's leave it a mystery. Email into <laughs> podcast at com if you want to hazard a guess as to how many kids Andy does have. <laughs> Coming up next, we've got the news followed by your questions and you're listening to the Running Channel podcast. So it's almost question time, but before we do that, every week, Sarah and I will bring up a new story that we think would be interesting to chat through. So Sarah, what have you got? I've got one of the world's craziest and probably one of the world's hardest races. Is it, it the Running Channel bubble race where we all, <laughs> where we all run around a track in uh, in Zorbs? No, it's no. slightly harder than that. Okay, It's the return of the Barkley Marathons. If you don't know what this is, this is one of the strangest, hardest, most difficult ultra running races in the world. And it's quirky, which I like. Quirky is an understatement. So if you haven't, check out the uh, the documentary on Netflix about it. Yeah, there's um, loads. It's it's been billed as like the race that eats its young. It's, yeah, I think that's a, that's a uh, the Ginger Runner production that yeah. one on, on YouTube. That's also an amazing film. So yeah, it's it's absolutely bonkers and all come out of the mind of uh, Lazarus Lake. 
Yeah. So that's a real name as well. But <laughs> but this this race is incredible. So it's roughly around a hundred miles. It mm. is run through really, really tough conditions. It's not one course, it's loops. So there are lots of different loops that you do. The race starts by him lighting a cigarette and every single person has a race number. And as they go around the loops, they have to find pages from a book that they bring back into the checkpoint once they've completed a loop. Yes, they have to prove that they've got to all of the different checkpoints and they rip out a page from the book that matches their race number right for, yeah. that, for that circuit. Yeah, and they go back in. The race hasn't had a finisher since, I think, 2017. So wow. it's becoming more yeah. and more exciting to see who is going to be the next finisher. And it's the same lap every time, right? But, but it reverses direction each time so once you finish one lap then you have a little break or you can choose how long you have a break for you could go straight back out if you're mental but like you have you know get your recovery and nutrition and so on and then you'd go back out then you have to navigate essentially backwards around the same loop that you've just run forwards around and they alternate each time right yeah and also i've i think this year they or they probably do this most years but i don't think it's just alternating so i think this year they've done like one loop clockwise then they did two anti-clockwise and now they've gone back to clockwise so even harder how many loops in total do you know i think it's five okay i think it's five and it's roughly about 20 miles per loop yeah but everyone who does it reckons it's much longer than that and you've got to self-navigate you get get to pour over paper maps beforehand and then you basically have to remember it like you don't you can't take technology with you to no to, to kind of um navigate it's absolutely brutal if you finish three laps i think it's within 40 hours then it's called a fun run (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> which will be roughly fun. around like yeah. 60 to 70 miles that you will have done you know, yeah just a nice little fun run yeah and then i think whoever gets back first after the penultimate loop gets to choose which direction they go on the very last loop and then mm. the, the second person if there is a second person which there isn't always um has to go the opposite way so they can't kind of chase each other around that 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 final loop <sighs> Absolutely brutal. This year, it's very, very exciting because we've got some incredible runners from the UK yeah. competing. So last year, Jasmine Paris did a fun run. And this the year... Three laps. The fun run is so... <laughs> I love that. It's it's ridiculous for what it is. It's yeah. kind of the same as calling like a really hard effort a jog. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's literally the exact same yeah. of like, come on, she's done so well. Yeah. So yeah, she did that last year. This year, she surpassed the fun run. Um, they're out there doing it right now. We're recording the podcast as they are just coming into the close of lap four. So yeah, you're avidly following it and quite annoyed that we're not going to be able to like reveal. I know. The I'm result. so disappointed that this is the time that we chose to record. Yeah. So but there might not be a result because they might, no one might finish. Yeah, yeah I know, exactly. but I want to see how far they get because there are some incredible people competing. There's someone who's won it three times who is yeah. competing. There's um, John Kelly, who's an American athlete who's out there smashing it. Although apparently he's limping according to the oh, official right. Twitter feed. Wow. We've got Damien hall who won the spine race that we talked about um a while back on the podcast nikki spinks who if you don't know who she is she is incredible she used to be a lawyer in london and then she um i think got breast cancer gave all of that up and went to do be a sheep farmer up north and now she is a phenomenal ultra runner yeah and she's i mean this is and i'm uh, i'm meaning this as a compliment because it makes the feats even more incredible she's she's not like in her 30s right she's she's quite a bit older yeah i'm not sure how exactly how old but yeah yeah, she is like a really seasoned runner and it's kind of this is what i love about ultra running is that it's not it's not necessarily all like 20 to 30 year olds who are taking on these epic feats it's kind of kind of shows that you need to be i think for the ultra running is as much mental as it is physical and it's kind of you need a little bit of life experience to be able to deal with the mental resilience and toughness that you need for these kind of challenges i've got way more life experience than you uh because i'm so (laughs) old as you like to remind me but you've done an ultra and i haven't because i that life experience has given me absolutely no ability to tolerate the kind of pain and endurance (laughs) that would be required you just ran around in circles yes (laughs) i I mean that takes that takes quite a lot of mental resilience to be fair i'm incredibly good at turning left (laughs) but that is that is that is all that is in my locker not a sharp left though a kind of gradual left gradual as as it has to immediately be followed by a straight line yeah yeah, and then another left otherwise Game doesn't over. go anywhere. No, so exactly. you're like going the other way around the course. You'd be scuppered by that. Yeah, if I had to turn right, I had to probably just have to turn left three times. Sarah's working. <laughs> Sarah's working that one out. <laughs> I think that works. Yeah, and then if you went, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's Sarah's doubting me. That's uh, boggled my brain. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I pictured a square. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, your new story. Oh, it's sort of um, ultra trail related, but it was in, um, I saw it in the BBC News and it's it's not news to me. 
but I think it might be news to people out there who might not know her story. So Sabrina Pace Humphreys was on the BBC News or BBC Sports kind of news this week, uh, basically telling her story. So she's someone we featured on the Running Channel and worked with before. Um, she uh, co-founded or founded the, the Black Trail Runners group. Um, but she she actually found running, and interestingly, she found running through jogging, um, which ties it in nicely. Uh, back in 2009, when she um, suffered was suffering from pretty severe postnatal depression, I think after the birth of her fourth child, uh, had never run or anything before, but was recommended by her GP to try something that was going to get her out, and in particular to try jogging. So she tried it, was terrible, didn't like it, but then kind of just gradually did more and more. And then she built up to Marathon de Sable and, and then... Um, then the experiences of, of racism that she'd had through her life led her to try and get more black runners on the trails represented. Uh, and that's part of the video that we did with her. But just I think that story is really powerful. Yeah, it's so powerful. And the work that she's doing, she's mm. recently released a book, which yeah, I think right. someone is reading on yeah. the shelf. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is incredible. And the work that she's doing is amazing. And it's so nice to see the impact that it's having like yeah. representation matters so much that's what she says and if you know sabrina you'll kind of yeah. see that message but yeah if you're if you're going to do one thing today then go and have a look at what she's doing because that message needs to be spread even wider and you can do quite a lot to help yeah exactly let's all um i suppose just be allies for anyone out there who would like to to run and, and be outside and get healthy and active so every episode, I select a couple of questions for Andy and Sarah to answer. And if you do want to suggest a question next time, you can email us at uh, podcast at com. So Beth emailed to ask, my husband and I are both running the Great North Run in September, the first time at this length for both of us. We struggle to find the time to fit in long runs at the weekend, but we do enjoy it when we do. What do we miss by doing more shorter runs instead? What would be a good pacing strategy for these? couple of quick things uh one that's the fourth time that rick's read that out because i think <laughs> so we've had plenty of time to prepare an answer and uh number two great north run just for anyone listening from overseas that is a half marathon famous half marathon in the northeast i was editing it as as i went along okay right i was editing good 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 <laughs> <laughs> can i jump in yes here? so correct me if i'm wrong andy but i would say if you're struggling to fit in a long run which is fair i've definitely struggled mm -hmm. with this it can take up so much time there's a lot of admin there's a lot of like having to get yourself out the door. Yeah. But if you can do shorter runs, if you could do shorter runs back to back, that would help you to get... What, like a double day? Yeah. Like no, more. no, just like a one run on a Saturday and then one run on a Sunday. Yeah. That might help with getting the same kind of equivalent effect with what a long run is going to give you. So that's what I did when I was training for an ultra. So you get used to running on tired legs, which is going to help, which if you are doing slightly shorter... And yeah, it looks like he's going to disagree. No, I'm, I am agreeing with the fact that if you can't fit in a long run, then doing something back to back where you are practicing that running under fatigue is definitely like is definitely a good idea. And yeah. you could probably get the most bang for your buck there by running in, say, the evening on the Saturday and the morning on the Sunday. Yeah. So again, that's that's sort of simulating that. But there is broadly no direct substitute for a long run. Like you will get more benefit from it. Um, so. The, the way that your body responds to, to your kind of fueling and metabolism and so on is different. So, for example, I would have run a 90-minute long run, um, which for me was roughly a half marathon, and that was every week throughout my training. And I didn't ever uh, fuel for that. And the main reason was, my understanding at the time anyway, was the adaptation that I got for, for in the final 20 minutes of that long run was the reason that I was doing it. So if I just run an hour... I wouldn't have got the benefit that I got from running that extra mm. that extra half an hour because mm. I and I could feel it. I'd get to seventy minutes or so, and this is why you wouldn't not fuel in a race. But I could then feel that kind of slightly light lightheadedness, or, or like I could feel the glycogen depletion in that last twenty minutes. And there is something about a physiological response to making sure you do those long runs um, to that that will give you benefit over and above splitting into shorter runs. But you know you have to make the most of what you can get done. So you can be realistic with what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, the long run, especially if you're training for a half marathon, I would say the long runs are going to have less importance compared to a marathon where they are yeah. kind of one of the key components of your week. But long runs for a half marathon still 
have a huge effect and it kind of it kind of depends how much shorter you're going so if you're yeah. you don't have some people when they're training for a half will run the half distance lots of times throughout training or even longer if you can't get up to the half distance even getting to kind of 10 to 15 on a long run is going to have a much bigger benefit than if you're just doing 5k's back to back yeah and i, th I think just to the reason that you're doing it so if you're doing it to run your best possible time over a half marathon then yeah i think you need a longer run in there um but if you are doing it to give yourself the confidence that you're going to be able to finish the distance then yes i think splitting it into smaller runs is, is fine um and you just if you're sensible about feeling tired on those runs to get that sensation that you're going to get in the race and pacing strategy just quickly as you've mentioned that as well oh. chunk it yes if yeah. you are worried about the final race then absolutely chunk it why not test out a run walk strategy if you're if you're not going to be able to touch the kind of full distance before you get yeah. to it start thinking about run walk strategy and a lot of people will think oh well i'll just run as much as i can and then i'll walk the final part of the race yeah, no, yeah. plan it into a lot more discernible plan it, chunks and start practicing as it as well like i know um i've seen lots of people on instagram who they've used run walking to get back into fitness yeah. and it, it's meant that they've done either like a four minutes running one minute walking and that's mean, meant that they can jump back into doing kind of four to five k yeah as opposed to only being able to do three or chunk or chunk it into to i don't know four mile block so it's 13.1 miles you're roughly splitting it into thirds so yeah. you could just make sure you go slow enough in that first four miles then pick up the pace a little bit through the middle and then you you know you're, you're four or five miles to go and then you might just maintain that or, or but you mentally you've, you've broken it down okay so this next one is from michael who asks uh he says he's been ill recently and not run properly for three weeks now he said that he's paranoid that when he does get back to running he's going to be out of breath slow and back to square one so just how much fitness do you lose when you haven't run for a while and how long does it take to get back? Do you know what? I, I think when you haven't run for a while, l lots of stuff kicks in. Mm. Like this week, I was on the treadmill and I was on number six and I just couldn't figure for the life of me if it was six miles an hour or six <laughs> kilometers an hour that I was running. And I was on it for 25 minutes trying was, to figure out, you know, I hadn't had... I'd had a couple of Pinot Grigios the night before, but not night nothing. Before, not, I thought more. That wasn't your, that wasn't your <laughs> hydration strategy. It, it, it was a Sunday. It was a Sunday. So, you know, a couple of light ones. You know, um, and I just couldn't get my head around what I was doing. And I, was, I started pressing treadmill on, on my Garmin, just trying to make it work to figure out what I was doing. And even at the end, I still had no idea if I'd been running six kilometers or six miles an hour. Do you know now? Just No, just six. The best uh, The best thing about that was you started by saying, I was on number six. And I thought that was going to be it. I thought that was the anecdote. So I, was just, I, I always run at level six. Yeah, yeah. Level six, no, six miles an hour kilometers. I mean, this you know, is what one of my friends kilometers. at, was it kilometers? In the UK, most treadmills are in kilometers. Yeah, it? sure. It's got a weird gym though, it might be miles. Yeah. You want it to be faster, I want it to right? be faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the the first thing to, like, I would regularly, ha the paranoia is normal mm. uh, and don't be tempted to come back too soon. So always wait one extra day. You know, the first day that you feel like, oh, I could run today, whether that's injury or illness, a good, good, good kind of rule of thumb is give it another day. Uh, but even if I had two or three days out with illness, whether that's like a small cold or chesty cough or something, and I'd been training really well for years before it, those three days out, the first run back, I felt exactly how uh, Michael's described, like out of breath, slow, back to square one. Mm. Um, so I guess brace yourself to feel like that and that that's totally normal. And so even athletes that are running at a really high level feel like, oh, I've never run before in my life. How do, how do I feel so bad? Um, like you, we, we actually talked about this recently, Sarah, you were ill before Christmas and had one of the worst sessions ever. And then you were like worried about your fitness going. Yeah. Uh, illness. I always, always struggle with. And I had a f few instances before Christmas where I just had to either take a day off or I actually was ill, not ill enough to stop running, but I noticed how it affected my runs. And actually at the moment, I feel like I'm in the same position, slightly different circumstances, but I finished a marathon. I took just over a week off and now I'm two weeks back into running yeah. and they all feel awful. <laughs> really? It takes you that long to recover? Yeah, I was reading, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I was actually reading how long it takes the body to recover after doing a marathon. And like, it, it's something ridiculous. Like you can return to running. Most people do after like one to two weeks, but actually your body's still recovering. So, so it, it's normal. Yeah. They're not going to feel effortless going back into it, especially all these elite runners. They're not out there for as long as us average runners. 
yeah, we're doing so four, five, true. six, seven, eight, nine hours. They're just out there for like two. Yeah, it's easy, isn't it? So there's definitely a perception <laughs> that they're running harder or, yeah. or you know, maybe they're running at a more... Oh, yeah, they're going pretty fast. A percentage of their max might be harder. So is that harder to recover from? And I don't know. And the shoes have made a big difference. Um, but yeah, people who are out there for running for longer than that, two, two and a half hours, that's a lot that you're putting your body through. Mm. But the super shoes have helped a bit. I definitely know that some people, when I was competing very little impact protection would actually not only take weeks to recover from their um, marathon, but they might even pee blood in the immediate aftermath. What? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. What? what? Um, yeah. What? I mean, I'm not, saying that's, I'm not saying that's what? normal or Why advisable. Why would that happen? Why would know. that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Rick's so concerned. <laughs> He's so upset. Yeah, go and, see, go and seek medical advice if this happens to you. But I, I definitely know instances where that happened, where the, I guess just the exertion or the pounding, the physical impact on your body just... Like wow, so we've had effect. taste blood and pee blood. Keep He's... listening to see what Andy talks about blood next. Brilliant. Yeah, it's all my fault. <laughs> lovely, <laughs> lovely blood-based anecdotes. My God. Right. Was well, it your nipples uh, who were bleeding <laughs> as well? No, <laughs> I've definitely never had bleeding nipples. I don't I've never had far n- enough to... Uh, oh, really? Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's yet. True. You don't yeah, run yeah. far enough yet. Yes, but exactly. back to the case in point, if you are struggling with it, if coming back after illness, and if actually what is just kind of stressing you out the most is mm. just feeling out of breath or a bit slow or anything my yeah. advice would be get in some distraction techniques whether that is yeah. listening to music or a podcast our podcast for example yeah. or Good going choice. and running with friends or going to park run doing something that is just mm. going to get away from all of the kind of nervousness that you might have around times or how it feels yeah. just distract yourself and and even the, the very best runners competing at a high level feel rubbish if they've had a few days off yeah. so it's it's totally normal you will have lost some fitness if you haven't been able to train at all for three weeks but just make your peace with that. Build back up slowly. Don't try and jump back in where you were before. And maybe use heart rate as a good indicator. Like if your heart rate doesn't settle back quickly after a run, if you take a recovery or, or whatever, then that's probably an in- indicator that you're nice. not quite, not quite yeah. ready to go again. Definitely. Well, that's it for this week. You've, we've got through another episode. Yes, just somehow. Just amazing, Hanging literally. on. <laughs> Hanging on. Please do keep emailing through any questions or suggestions or just insults if you want to direct them towards Andy to podcast at the running channel.com. We would love to hear from you and we'll see you next week.